Holy cow, it's the ladybug bringing some white death with a tangerine and a lemon in it, absorbing bad luck while the wolf is over there with his big knife and... I mean, that's a yellow jacket or a bee at best, but I'm gonna give him a pass and say it's the hornet messing it all up. Or maybe that's the white death in the back with the crown, he's like a king, and then the pie is like the sun, I don't know. Well, the contest to find the coolest snake name is officially over. Hiroyuki Sanada is always a win! Sorry, I jumped the gun this time. I just love the man. He'll earn it later. It's like all the themes of this movie. Bad luck, good luck, fate, wrath, karma, and then where they take place. That's getting to have your cake and eat it too. Two cakes! Also the first of a few extremely popular songs sung in Japanese that I'm all about. It's like they set out to see if Brad Pitt could pull off silly looks, put him in this Echo Park coffee pop-up uniform, and spoiler, he does. Might seem contrived until you remember he's an American in Japan where they drive on the left, so he looked the wrong way down the street. And I like that our Japanese audience knew something was relevant with Ladybug's name immediately. A time being bilingual makes movies more interesting. And he didn't die. Okay, he drove him to the hospital. It's good luck. Solid job at quickly making Ladybug immensely likable, especially now that we know he has the bucket hat and multiple colors. People are considerate. Except for that guy. I mean, he gave them my bad wave. What more could you ask for? Still, already loving that stories are starting to cross. Well, Barry says it's time for some change. I think he's right. Barry does not know what you do for a living. Between Ladybug and his handler and these two gems, I'm getting the best Guy Ritchie banter vibes. I do that. Something called compulsion or something. I have to take it if I see it. You need to talk to someone. Serious. I think I dropped my ticket too. He did. Also, that could be the Hornet right there, which makes the idea of our kids dancing with people in costumes terrifying. You found her. Dynamite cast, killer piece of score, and an expectations of version inside 10 minutes? Off to a good start. Yeah, I want everyone yeah, to see yeah. my talk. It is a dope tie. Wait. What? Trying to stick around the hand. Yeah? Eh, wasting no time setting up Ladybug's luck. Oh, well, look at this. Sleeping Beauty. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bacon. What am I? Oh, that's a fun in-camera move. Huh? What are we supposed to learn? We'll get to that later. Six, seven. seven you're starting to get my f***ing tits. Sixteen. I'll smash my and for a brick wall. We Americans just don't know how to communicate our love like the British. The stylization, the banter, the fourth wall breaks. I mean, the main win here is for Engelbert Humperdinck, just a fantastic name. And there were hints that this movie was gonna get violent, but if you had no idea, this scene throws you into the deep end without warning. It's super brutal, but in a Deadpool kind of way that is both gross, but also constantly reminding you that it's a movie and we're just having fun. Also enjoy that it's made exceedingly clear that the twins aren't screw-ups, they're virtuosos of their domain. Also, David Leach living the dream, getting killed in his own movie. SAA take responsibility, mate. Our American mocking isn't up to snuff either. <laughs> he doesn't need a reason to kill people like you. He needs a reason not to. Does he have one? <laughs> that look. Even funnier when you learn that Percy Jackson's dad set the whole thing up with the intention of his son getting killed. Funny might not be the right word. Ah, West Ham, now I see why I'm forever blowing bubbles was the twins' montage music. So on point that the prince is reading Shibumi, a highly respected novel about an assassin, thought to be somewhere between satire and a parody of the thriller action genre, and it has really similar cover art to my copy of Shogun, which threw me at first. Anyway, Chad Stahelski, you know him as the John Wick guy at this point, he put it in that too. He's gonna adapt it. That and Ghost of Tsushima, guys live in my dreams. Also with just staggeringly more talent and skill in every conceivable necessary field. Oh my gosh, his upcoming list is three times longer than his previous list. I want you to go in there and kill I'm sorry, what's your boy's name again? Wataru. Right. Right. Kill Wataru. Wow, I've really only seen Joey King in small parts, and I gotta say, she's awful. In a good way, I already don't like her, and she's had like a total of 90 seconds of screen time. Good stuff. Speaking of awful, badass bad guy. It's a badass scene, yet somehow knowing it's Michael Shannon makes it even more badass. Not even doing the Russian roulette for an audience to show how tough he is. Just doing it. That's a special kind of insane. Ooh, cross the line with this scene. Literally, across the 180 line. Oh no, if this give you a full sense of security, you might not get shot in the neck. Aw, he was right, just not about himself. Yeah. I'm not a West Ham fan, but I'd follow these two into battle. And I love the total 180. A second ago, they were feeling confident with their mental soundtracks blasting the Cockney Rejects version of Bubbles, and then a total tone shift. The record slowing down is a great effect. 
There are a lot of backstory montages in this film, and they're all awesome, but the wolves might be the best. Starting with a kid coming from nothing, the classic tragedy feels, and then moving up through his years being invaluable to his own gang, having his own story that goes far beyond his under three minutes alive in this movie. Not to mention Alejandro Sanz's La Despedida, the farewell in English, has the perfect buildup. It starts slow and almost plodding, just a voice and a guitar, and ends super epic with strings, horns, and a chorus. If you don't catch it, it's fun to go back and have your mind blown that Brad Pitt was right there. And if you do, it's awesome to recognize Ladybug even if we don't know the whole story yet. He put his wedding suit back on to get his revenge, complete with the wine and bloodstains. And just in case you thought it was like the next day, he didn't have the revenge tattoo at his wedding, so it's been a little while. The song ends right on the stab, and then Ladybug's confused face. Sick, no look behind the back block. Dude, I don't even know you! Every one of Ladybug's responses is so money. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't get much more tragic than that, especially since he was basically taken for a ride. At least he was a somewhat romantic death. Somewhat, I said somewhat. Brutal. But don't get David Leach if you don't want gnarly fights and deaths. Let this be a lesson in the toxicity of anger. I wanna hate it, but I love it so much. Therapy with Ladybug. Dang it, I'm a sucker for Japanese whiskey product placement. Alexa, add EYE to my shopping list. Right, I don't have Alexa. Julia. <laughs> That's a fun sensor of the knife pull and transition to one of our other stories. A lot of movies want you to remember stuff, and that's great too, but sometimes it's fun when the movie just cuts to an ad for an animated fake TV show. Also hints that these assassins have more in common than we might think. Because they're both posing dead bodies. About the story about how Gordon met Percy and how Percy's now bleeding from his f***ing eye sockets. It's funny because it's Thomas the Tank Engine, but also it's Percy Jackson that's bleeding from his eye sockets. No, excuse me. You are... An excuse. Look, I'd never champion cursing and being rude to strangers, but come on, lady. Etiquette of every opening door ever is that you let the people out or off first, so appropriate reaction. IRL, most things are coincidences, so it makes sense that Ladybug doesn't really spend any time thinking about why Momonga just tried to steal the case. Plus, mascots are always messing with people, so it checks out. You look like every white homeless man I've ever seen. <laughs> Brad's homeless chic phase was a while ago. Well, you also have a shootable face. Agreed. He said smoochable, right? Wasn't expecting Bad Bunny to nail physical comedy, but this dude can do anything, so that's on me. Ooh, yeah, throat chop me all day, but we've all felt that one. Poor Lemon can't get away from this woman. Honestly surprised she makes it out alive. Did you see that smooth mag swipe? And then a reload by moving the gun down on the mag? I'm sure I've seen John Wick do it, doesn't make it any less cool. And then chambers the round with the edge of the table? Oh, He's a bag of dicks, lady. Oscar winning, Hollywood legend, Brad Pitt, LGs and NBs. I guess that will suffice for surviving. Gets its own name card. That's a badass good or bad. Are animal, animals neutral? Whatever, that's a badass snake. Just noticing Ladybug's hornet tattoo and is that, was that a Tiananmen Square protest tattoo? Hey bro. A cameo from Channing Tatum reading a romance novel while Brad Pitt talks to Sandra Bullock on the phone after the Brad Pitt cameo in The Lost City, an adventure movie about romance novelist Sandra Bullock and her cover model Channing Tatum. Did I say that right? The Hornet, who's in the Momonga suit, dying from boomslang venom foreshadowing? Sure, why not? There's a million reasons he could be looking at Oni masks, but something tells me it has to do with the White Death. The old punch and Judy. Ah, because they're puppets. <laughs> Why do they all look ridiculous and yet I still want to be all of them? I want to make sure it weren't some Yakuza trap, but clearly not. It's some f***ing 80s dance off, innit? Yes, and we love the blood pack for it. Come up with the answers later. Always do. I know I'm always asking for backstory movies and spin-offs, but Tangerine and Lemon is a movie slash show I'd watch in a heartbeat. And it should be called Shoot First, Come Up With Answers Later. I love that this makes it seem like the son had done something really terrible to the prince. Instead, he was just like... <laughs> <laughs> more loved. If I had one in the chamber, I would rock this bad boy right now. As a person who probably doesn't talk about pooping on this channel enough, good for Ladybug. It's a human function and we need to normalize it more. Awesome x-ray shot. Ministered within 30 seconds, you're dead. That's poop air, bro. We gotta draw the poop line somewhere. <laughs> the subtitle censored her Japanese. Let's just check with the old translate app. I'm not sure what I expected. For revenge for his wife, his boss, came here to whack the hornet. Oh my god, did you just say whack? Sandra Bullock isn't even on screen and she's making me laugh. <laughs> yeah, knocks are no joke. I mean, his skull would probably be cracked right now, which is why they're illegal in most places, but still, rule of cool. But neither are cutting boards and they're legal. 
something about Ladybug's fighting style is hilarious. Like, you get the feeling he doesn't ever want to be fighting, but he's still pretty good at it and willing to do whatever to win. Having Karen Fukuhara not only commit no Kimiko level violence in this movie, but also be a sweetie of a concession employee is a choice. A great choice. Bro, I just remembered I gave all my money to that guy to wear my hat and glasses. Such a flex, even if it was accidental. <laughs> you bought him his weapon against you. Even the Tom Cruise's unimpeded devotion to realism stuff that doesn't happen in this movie is brutal. They even know what Lemon looks like. That's some serious quick thinking. You two do look like twins, huh? Yeah. So no one gets greedy. I have to believe that's actually Brad Pitt's Cockney accent. It's the only way he's human. Also, I knew it was coming and it still makes me laugh every time. I think it would take you three hours to even realize your son was missing. Some spoiled girl who protects his net toys. These two kind of are a perfect pair. She's right, three hours is a long time, and he's right, she's a brat. You gotta say, okay? Just one thing, though, Ah, uh... <laughs> he got him with the Columbo. A window of opportunity. Damn it, it's a door. <laughs> this time it actually is a door. And realizing that his insufferable new age mess up earlier with Lemon was really just a setup for this. Uh, I wait, it's a window. I wait, it's, it's a door. <laughs> <laughs> so pleased with himself. I'm sorry, I get captivated by white girl tears. Sassy Brian Tyree Henry is my favorite. I'm really good at reading people and something tells me you are just not f right. And he really does read people, but Pobody's nerfect. Tangerine calls him a Don later, but his biggest flaw is that he didn't trust himself. Man, you are f you are really good. You sure you didn't study? Game recognized game. That's badass in a crazy stupid way. I'm not hating. No, you have to love how she just goes with it. But she's also ruthless and awful. The needle is so clearly visible when you know it's there. Hey, you'd have the kid killed with his own ransom? Wow, that's dark. True. Oh, wow, that's a genius move. Oh, man, followed by another. And another. Instead of trying to pull it from her hand, he grabs her hand and pulls her arm towards him. That alone would be disorienting. Ladybug presents as a doofus, but he really does end up being one of the more competent criminals. You gotta be better prepared. I'm mansplaining, I'm mansplaining again. Still good to catch yourself, though. You want me to hold your hand? Aw, it's actually a sweet offer. It's played for laughs, and he's not even a little shaken up over how many people he's killed today, but we get the feeling that he doesn't really want to be an assassin anymore, so it feels totally genuine. Karma is a bitch. You have to appreciate that he doesn't even acknowledge that every line Zassi utters ends in Bitch, 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 bitch. But then he just reiterates it at the end. I did not expect this to hit me like it does. We get the feeling they had history, but Tangerine didn't strike me as the emotional or caring or soul-containing type. We find out they really grew up together and they were brothers, so it makes sense. It was just jarring for me in a great way. And I gotta say, I'm not sure I've ever heard three different versions of a song used in the same film that all perfectly encapsulate the feeling of the scene. Wait, this is... There is no one left on that train. I bought every ticket. Tangerine realizes it at the same time we realize it, just as the White Death says it and as the camera spins us out of control. It's a real God help me I buried her in the earthen floor of the fruit cellar moment. And I hope someone's f***ing found it, put it all on red, and having a f***ing wonderful time. Also, as sad as this Romeo and Juliet false death moment is, seeing Tangerine let it all go and no longer care about anything, not even fear death because his brother is gone, is both tragic and touching. Lemon was all he really cared about. We had good backup plan and that a pretty girl makes a good hostage. It's not really fair, cause like, she's an actress, but no one, and I mean no one would suspect her. Was it Don? Except the Don. <laughs> Look, he tried to warn you, but I respect that he had to go out on a burn. He's just never not cool. What's he doing looking at a flower? Cool AF. Grab your bag. Ah. Appropriate reaction. My grandson was pushed off a roof. What makes you think I would leave him unprotected? I mean, that's a really good point that I hadn't considered, but makes perfect sense. I wouldn't expect Kimoto to have considered it either, not that it would change anything he did anyway. Let's consider it. I mean, it, it's the thought that counts. Already got a dose of anti-venom in me today. So. More that bad luck, good luck thing going on. A blind man could see you are the one in the dark. Ah, got him with Donnie Yen's line. Or actually, this movie was first, so Kane got Hiroyuki in John Wick 4. Good story for you, I think. I'm cool. You gotta appreciate that both Ladybug insists he doesn't need the story, and that the Elder refuses to take the hint. I also like that it wasn't hidden that Minigishi was clearly looking at someone the first time we saw this scene, we just didn't know who. Ash and blood. Alright, Dominic Lewis, I see you. Score slaps. The strings telling a story with that high melody, what sounds like an organ blasting in the emotional bass, and then possibly a glockenspiel twinkling a little depressing whimsy, even Dom's own voice singing in the background. 
Also, that's the kanji for white and the kanji for death below it. It holds all the bad luck so that others may live in peace. You gotta love these unapologetically epic moments, like the sun hitting Ladybug's face as the Elder talks about his name and purpose. He shot me. Mm, me too. Twice. It's funny because they're not wrong, he did shoot them, and he seems like a decent guy. Multitudes, we contain them. <sighs> uh, okay, so this might be a stretch, but it was bugging me that Lemon said this when Tangerine asked him if he was wearing a vest earlier. You still got that vest on, yeah? Oh, no, vest give you a false sense of security. Maybe he was just messing with his brother, or maybe Tangerine gave him his? Look, when Tangerine finds Lemon unconscious, he's got his tie on. After putting the glasses on the sun, he has an extra button unbuttoned and his tie is gone. Is it possible? He clearly doesn't have one on after. <laughs> Maybe they're just disturbed because of Bolivia, but it's sort of crazy that the strongest relationship in this movie is between two psycho killers. Fellas, when we are so quick to anger, we are slow to understand. I hate how much I love this character. More therapy with Ladybug. And throwing the TP is just... <laughs> A plum does not resent the hungry man, but the farmer who planted the tree. He resents the, resents the farmer. So how do plum, plums have resentments oh, now. <laughs> the banter. I think Ladybug is really trying to parse the message and Lemon only appreciates allegories about drains. Prepare together while we die alone. I say this to Margot when it's time to clean up the toys. Adds a little pep to her step. Freaking Zod. What a bizarre yet perfect cast. Deutschke. Truly took me off guard and it makes sense when you think back on everything she's doing. Taya. And I don't mean to dismiss her feelings. It's a big deal to feel like your guardians prefer a sibling over you. Just maybe not a spitting in their dead face big deal. Even now she's playing the part expertly. Psycho! Honestly, somehow not killing her feels even more dismissive. Is he pointing out that this guy's face is all Zuko'd? Ah, Lemon wasn't necessarily disturbed so much as not looking forward to the amount of work they had ahead of them. Had your own kid killed? This whole time the prince thought the White Death cared more about his son than her, but actually it's way worse. He just cared about killing him in the most elaborate way possible. Yeah, it helps to process this. I, I have a good therapist. I love See, therapy with Ladybug. Hey, doesn't that guy on a soccer team or something? He looks super familiar. <laughs> Did the White Death just do a superhero landing after an explosion? Carver would approve. I guess he is tough, especially when you see Ladybug's landing. Okay, so like all the times I've said, hey, cool music in this movie, I wasn't even giving Dom Lewis enough credit because he either wrote or produced most of the songs even when they sound like needle drops. Or sometimes he just blended the score perfectly to lead into the needle drop, in this case, Mika Asakura's cover of Hero. I don't know how this guy gets his mohawk to stand up like that with so much movement still. Props to him and the silent on set. <laughs> Yo, right through the seat back. Yes, there is no reason for this and it makes the experience exponentially better, love it. Hiroyuki Sonata is always a win. Always, always a win. Saving, well, it's the guy who killed your brother, so that sucks. Good guy Lemon. I got this! Stop the train! What?! Ladybug often feels like he's outside this universe with us, viewing it and being confused about stuff just like we are. Almost our surrogate when Lemon tells him to stop a bullet train with Japanese controls after Lemon the train guy couldn't figure it out. White Death using a traditional two-handed katana against the Elder with what I first thought was a wakisashi, but it's too long for that, so it might be just a katana without a tsuba, or possibly a shirasaya, which wouldn't really be used for combat, but this is the Twilight Samurai, he can do whatever he wants. Don't blame me, I tried really hard, but their weapons fit both of their whole vibes. <laughs> That is awesome and awful. Fun fact about me, love a good death via knife throw. Just looks awesome in movies. It seems terrible in real life. I almost respect that. It's still nuts, but I almost respect it. The water bottle gets its own titles and origin story. Oh, so brutal and so badass. Just the most terrific thing ever. This movie has a lot of that. I mean, no living creature survives this, and somehow that makes it even better because they all do. And it plays right into Ladybug's ladybugness. It's just a top tier bonkers fun scene where they even have time to exchange knowing glances. Just let it go, bro. Blood out, call me, bro! I know it's most likely due to blood loss, blunt force head trauma, and the fact that his whole plan to avenge his wife's death has fallen apart in front of him. But I love that getting called bro is the thing that seemingly has angered the white death beyond anything else that's happened. <laughs> Wonderfully gross, but honestly, Ladybug's response noise is the win here. Uh, uh. You need some suggested reading. 
if I may. He's still trying to better the people around him like a true caring therapist, even when they're trying to kill him. You were the greatest, most wonderful handler that I could ever have. Just the best rapport, love these two. Do a rom-com. In a movie where nothing is by accident, this is beautiful. And it's the tangerine truck that almost killed Ladybug earlier. Also, can we get Brian Tyree Henry in more action roles, more roles in general? He has yet to miss. David Leach isn't some newcomer. Deadpool 2 and John Wick are enough to show that he knows what he's doing, but Bullet Train is another category by itself. It really feels like Leach's stab at a Guy Ritchie-style gangster movie, and surprisingly, he nailed it for the most part. All the interconnected stories and overlapping narratives jumping around in time, it all coalesces extremely well for a pleasing and easy-to-follow end product. I'm not here to say it's some earth-shattering new fave, but I can see watching it again, and I'd be totally down for sequels or spin-offs in this universe. Part of the fun of interconnected stories is that once you realize that, like, if the wolf had picked any other door to enter the train, Ladybug leaves with the case and the story is basically over. But you can feel from the beginning that it's going to be one crazy day of coincidences, like it would fit in as one of the stories in the opening of Magnolia. One thing that the film nails for me is the violence because it's incredibly violent, even gory at times, but it never felt like too much. As soon as we see the twins flashback, we know what we're in for, and it's a much harder target to hit than I think we give credit for. We just did Cocaine Bear, and even though it was a mostly fun movie, the tone of the violence was often unsettling and apparently intentionally so so kudos to them. But personally, it kept taking me out of it. I was never taken out of the film by the violence here. It was entirely in line with the absurd dialogue and visuals. That first bloody scene also contains fourth wall breaks. It all works together. Big surprise, the performances are all killer. Literally nobody in this film misses. Because I'm 57, I wasn't super familiar with Joey King, but good lord, she's good at being evil. And it's just amazing what pros like Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry can do when they're given a tight script like this. But obviously, if Brad hadn't aced it, this movie could have been a real slog. But he was perfect. I mean it, literally no notes. He's so likable, but also believable as a... I mean, what was his job? I, they never really say it. Former assassin, I suppose? But his lines about therapy and self-improvement could have easily felt corny or hacky, but instead they felt true to his character and the silly little journey he's on. I know sometimes we assume someone like Brad Pitt will be good because... You know, he's Brad Pitt. But movies like this make me appreciate that there's a reason this dude is a superstar. And that's Bullet Train. I slept on this one for a while, and I'm glad it was requested enough to make me reconsider. Next week is this one, but I'll also have a couple new things up on Nebula. And that's that, Mattress Man. That's not the hint. I just wanted to say it. Should I do Punch Drunk Love? Sound off in the comments. It's up there as one of my favorite P.T. Anderson movies, Ben Adam Sandler movies, actually. What a weird way to end a video. I do love an accent. God, he's got a great walk.